My dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, I welcome you in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Tonight's reflection will come from the book of Psalm, chapter 1, from verse 1 to 3. Book of Psalm, chapter 1, from verse 1 to 3. And the theme of our contemplation is success at last. Success at last. Let's go into prayer. Loving Father, I, your holy servant, stand before your holy ground, before your throne of grace. We thank you for granting success to the work of our hands. Success is your name. Victory is your name. You never disappoint your people. Even when we feel that you don't answer our prayer, you do. God's ways are not our ways. Sometimes we don't understand your language. Sometimes we don't, we don't understand your signs and symbols. Your yes. symbolo is a mystery to your children. Unravel the mystery that your children will be able to understand and to increase their faith. We thank you for allowing us to call your name. We thank you for allowing us to be in your presence tonight. In your presence, anointing breaks the yoke. Success follows your people. There is prosperity for your children. There is a short posterity for them. Father, we thank you. For when we are with you, we are happy. When we, when we are with you, families are rejoicing. Because there is peace in your presence. There is serenity in your presence. There is sanity in your presence. There is love in your presence. There is success in your presence. Father, we thank you. Today is another day. Many people went to work. Many are still going to work. Some people have come back from work. And they are thanking you and appreciating your presence with them at work. You have made their business today successful. Father, we thank you. That we are alive today is you. That we are succeeding today is you, oh Father. In you, everything lives and moves and has their being. We thank you for being the essence of our being. Father, we thank you. Father, we glorify your presence. The students are thanking you for the success you've granted them in the exams. Your daughter that has been failing exams for many years has passed her board exams. She's thanking you for she has passed her board certification exam at last. She is filled with joy. She said that I should thank God in a special way for her, that God has remembered her, that you, my God, has remembered you. There is no forgetfulness in the Lord, but that's her language. The human language is not divine. But she spoke her human language to you. That's the language she understands. And you understand every language, Father. She's thanking you. She's thanking you. She's glorifying your name. That her sleepless nights were never in vain. That her perseverance was never in vain. That her faith in you did not fail her. Life is a struggle. She recounted many times she wanted to leave prayer. She no longer had the strength to pray. And continued knocking at your door. I continued encouraging her. And so, child of God, tap into the victory and the success of this young girl. 
Tap into the success of this young girl. Learn from the Lord. Abraham waited for many years. And he succeeded in having a child. And now we are singing Abraham blessings am I. But are we able to stay like Abraham in faith? This young girl is a living testimony in her own time that all hope is not lost. She called me and said, Father, success at last. And that's why I'm using that, that uh, her phrase, success at last, for this night to encourage many people that are losing hope, losing hope in the Lord, losing hope in their faith, to stand firm. Stand firm. What I'm saying to you is not easy. Hope in the Lord. Bring them still. Our Savior and our God. The Lord that brought you into this life knows what you will be. All you have to pray is that the Lord will show you the way to succeed in life. Look at the door of Jesus. He said, I am the way. Jesus has said, I am the way. He knows the way that will lead you to success. He knows the way that will help you to succeed in your business. He knows the way that will lead you to a victory. We will sing songs of praise. We will sing songs of victory. You will soon change your name to success. You will soon change your name to victory. You will soon change your name to favor. For God will be favoring you, child of God. When you are having difficult moments, do not relent in your prayer life. It's not easy what I'm telling you. Father, there's also one family that has been going to court for many years because of their land. Their, their kings and kindreds have been threatening them because they didn't have anybody in the government to speak for them. And today, victory came. They are rejoicing, Father. They are thanking you. You always show your face in a mysterious way. You always show your face in a mysterious way. Guess what happened to you of the light? God has sense of humor. This woman told me that she came to court. And guess who was in the court? Her schoolmate. Her schoolmate was the judge. Before the court started, She shouted the name of the judge. And the judge turned around and said, what were you doing here? She burst into crying. She stepped out with her and told her the whole truth. Told her the whole truth. She told her, wipe away your tears. Wipe away your tears. I knew you when we were in school. You were still very prayerful. And you are still the same. Never changed. Look at that kind of trust. How many years in their life as students? Children of the light, it is good to be good. Especially students and your and your, and your, and your fellow staff. You never know who will help you along the way. Someone you know may be the ladder that may save situations in your life. 
Somebody may be the ladder that will lead you to success. Never neglect anybody. This woman was telling me her story. Father, wonder shall never end. That she came to court and she didn't even know that the judge that very day was her classmate. And after telling her story, the judge looked at the case. Said, Were you the one? It happened that they had already bought the whole the whole scot with money. And the, and the case was adjourned for further review. Since the judge had already known the truth. You know, no more you didn't sue a cause. No one is judge in some case. But the paraclet. The paraclet. The Holy Spirit, the ruler of a time. When he steps into the court, there is success. Because he is the advocate of his own people. You can imagine when Jesus said, Unless I go, the advocate will not come. Pray that I go, that the Holy Spirit will come. The Spirit of God fights our hidden battle. Child of God, no matter how big is your own situation, no matter how your situation is so complex, God has a sense of humor. God has a way to untie the chain in your life. He has a way to break the chain and the yoke of the enemies against you. And this woman told me that their court case eventually came again. And they looked into the case. And they saw that there were missing things in the file. And she brought fresh things. And the lawyer was able to present the situation. And that was the end of the case. Child of God, I don't know what is going on in your own case. But God will stand in your own case. Success will be yours, child of God. Victory will be your side of God in the mighty name of Jesus. He has given us victory. We are in dominion. When he comes in glory, we shall rejoice in glory. He has given us victory. We are in dominion. When he comes in glory, we shall rejoice in glory. Yes. In the America, I have a choco. In the America, I have Sing praises to God. Sing a new song to the Lord. Don't wear gloomy faces. Brighten your face. Put oil on your face, even when you're fasting. For your God is victorious. Your God is a victorious God. And victory is your name. Success is your name. The merry carnival. The merry carnival. Moga bianibu Ani game o kamo Ndi meri kanibo Ndi meri kanibo Mwaga biane bube yao Ani game o kamo Yes When the Lord comes in glory we shall rejoice in glory The enemies may be laughing at you. 
they don't understand who you are. If they know the kind of God you have, they will hide their faces. If they know the kind of God you have, your enemies will be hiding their faces. There was a young man. His brothers and sisters, they have pumped money into his business. They have pumped money into his business. And this young man didn't know what was happening with him. He didn't know what was happening with himself. He will see the money. But how the money vanishes, he didn't know. The sister is living in uh, at Atlanta. She called me. Father, he can't we'll go more. I've been supposed to, this boy, this man is my own senior brother. He was the one that's supposed to be supporting me and my family. But because of the love I have for him as my brother and my senior brother, I've been pumping money into his business. But he's still dependent on me. I told her to put her brother uh, in, uh, in, in three ways so that we shall talk. I canceled the young man. We prayed together. And I asked him to tell me honestly what's going on with the business money. He said, Father, no, you don't want to. But he was surprised that he couldn't even give account of what was going on with the business. That, her, that his sister had tried. That he didn't even have the mouth to be asking her for money. I said, you haven't answered my question. What's going on with the money? Father, I don't know. We don't know what how do you how do how are you doing the business then? Say that somebody introduced him to the business. I said, Did you go to learn the business? Yeah, I was following them. I was I stayed six months and I thought I had I had already uh perfected the business and then uh asked my sister to give me money for me to study my own. I'm just quoting the man. I said, it was six months enough for you to have learned the business? He said, yeah. The guy was uh, going to China, Taiwan, everything. That he put the money there, hoping that things would come. And then uh, everything was stocked in the warehouse, and the mortgage was going on. And then um, the, the, the protest and everything distracted, and the, there was... Uh, uh, chaos in, in Lagos and whatever. And then everything was, uh, demorage was going up. He couldn't uh, bring out the business and so on. He was telling me that was the last one that happened to him. And then uh, the market price and the change of money, dollar, everything, that he couldn't even get uh, the capital, talk less of uh, making um uh, profit out of it that uh, he didn't know how to explain all this thing to the system. That he was sorry about it and he, that he was avoiding his sister. I said, that's not the issue. You're supposed not to be avoiding your sister. You are the senior brother. I know that uh, money was involved and uh, all those things. But you need to explain certain things to her. Did you explain all this? She said that uh, every time she he would be telling stories that he was tired of telling stories, and he 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 also apologized to the sister. The sister did not know the other this part, but uh, our tete -tete and our conversation I was able to help uh, diffuse the tension. You know, sometimes 
a communication the lack of communication uh, spoils a lot of things it destroys a, a relationship it destroys the relationship in families and uh, among friends you have to make sure that uh, you are communicating with your brother or your sister or someone that is trying to help you because it will go a long way uh, to uh, bond the relationship and uh, boost the morale of the person helping you. The, this young man is still struggling. But the sister said, but with this conversation, then uh, it wasn't all that his fault. And uh, there is better understanding now I was involved in the, in the hearing and so on. Uh, so it, it, sometimes uh, people, people shy away from their problems. Sometimes they don't communicate very well. And there is misunderstanding. Try to understand each other. How can they understand you if you don't explain yourself? When you shut down, no communication, how will your brother or your sister understand you? I know it's difficult to explain yourself, but you stomach your pride. And talk to your brother, talk to your sister that is bringing money to help you. It is hard earned money of someone. It is someone's sweat that is going. She would have saved the money for her family. But it, she's just pumping it in for the business to stand so that you'll be independent. And I gave him prayers. And hopefully, by God's grace, things will turn to normal and he'll be, he'll be successful. That's our hope. So keep this young man in prayer. Keep the sister in prayer. It's not e easy to give. Especially all these nurses and doctors after spending the whole night and day and uh, sometimes you don't even have uh, enough to save for your own. You're doing two jobs and so on and uh, all of a sudden you look at your account, you don't even have savings. You pay mortgage, you pay everything, school fees and so on. And you don't have even change for yourself or to change your wardrobe. It's not easy. We need each other. No man is an island. No woman is an island. We need each other. Pray for one another. Communicate with your brother or your sister. Communicate with your wife. Communicate with your husband. If you are doing business with your wife's money, communicate to her. If you're doing business with your husband's money, communicate with her, with him. Communicate with your husband. Communicate with your wife. Your wife will be pumping money in your business and you don't give account. You don't even uh, uh, acknowledge uh, that you're making mistakes or you're, you're, you're just uh, stopping the money. Don't abuse the trust. Stop your manipulation. If success is coming out there, tell your wife. That will boost her morale to continue to support you. Don't fake any story and tell your wife or your husband. It's not good. It's not fair in the eyes of the Lord. It's not easy to cover up money. And you just embezzle it. Loving Father, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for your, the Lord that, that answers our prayers and heals the wounded hearts. Father, many people have been betrayed. Many people have been manipulated. Many people have been suffering because they are helping others. Heal the wounded hearts. Unite families once again. Grant them your blessing, O oh Lord, Father. Let them understand that you are the living God, the God of love and mercy. You're so compassionate, O oh Father. Let your light shine in their life once again. Father, deliver us in the canoe. Deliver Biafra land. Deliver Biafra land. There is too much wasting of blood in the land. 
Many innocent people are dying. Some of the youths are in occultic uh, uh, cults, killing each other. And the innocent ones die in crossfire. Father, the price of freedom is too much. Deliver our youths that are incarcerated in the prison yard. Deliver all your, your children. Bless the food that Mazen Nandi can eat. Bless his drinks. Bless his medications. And also our children that are incarcerated because of freedom. Bless their food. Bless their drinks. You can imagine in this hardship. People that are in the prison yard, they are not comfortable. They are not eating well. No balanced diet. They're even trying to drink water. Can you imagine the kind of water they'll be drinking? Can you imagine the kind of food? Oh, Father. Restore back hope to the hopeless people. For some people, life is worthless. For some people, life is meaningless. I pray that you grant hope also for the people that are suffering in the prison yard because of their faith in the Lord. We have many matters. Many people dying because of their faith in the Lord. Deliver them, Father. Deliver them from the hands of the executioner. Restore back hope to the Christians that are incarcerated. Put an end to war in the Middle East. Put an end to the war in the Middle East. Let there be mutual understanding. Let them live in peace. Put an end to war in Russia and Ukraine. And all parts of the world the innocent ones are dying. The innocent ones are suffering. It is only the peace of the Lord that can restore peace in the world. Only the peace in the Lord can restore peace in the world. Father, we have a lot to tell you tonight. We are thanking you for being our God. We are thanking you for granting success to the work of our hands. May your children live to reap the fruit of their labor. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Child of God, how are you tonight? Tell your brother, tell your sister, we shall succeed. Success will be our name. In the mighty name of Jesus. And that will lead us to the reflection of tonight, book of Psalm, chapter 1, from verse 1 to 3. Blessed is the one who does not walk in the step with the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers. But whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and who meditates on this law day and night. The three. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Child of God. The psalmist started by saying, Blessed is the one. Are you the one? Are you the one to be blessed tonight? How do you walk around? Are you walking around with good people? Or the people of the dark, the children of the dark? 
Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked. What has the light to do with darkness, child of God? Tell me whom you will go with and I will tell you who you are. What kind of friend do you keep? What kind of neighbor do you communicate with? Your parents will be telling you, be careful with this man, be careful with this woman. Sometimes we don't listen to our parents. Sometimes we don't listen to our siblings. You know it all. Can you man kai man kozo? People will cry when something happens to you. People will leave their job to come and comfort you. Be careful. Be careful who you work with. Be careful whom you go with. Blessed is the one who does not walk in the step of the wicked. Or in the step with the wicked. Or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers. Idleness is devil's workshop. What do you normally do during your break time, your leisure time? I have seen many workers during their break time, they go into the car. And they say they are rosary. Some of them stay in their car. They read the Bible. They don't know that I see them. They say they are rosary. Sometimes they walk along the valley. And they walk in pairs. And they are praying. Sometimes they are carried away by anointing. They, didn't, they won't even know that they are even... Uh, within the, the walking preface. Because they are, they are in spirit. They are communicating with the divine because of what's going on in their family. They make out time to communicate with the Lord in spite of their tight schedule. What kind of person do you work with? Do you work in the company of the wicked? Or do you work in the company of the life people? The children of the light. The kind of friend you keep may affect your lifestyle. If you go into the kitchen, when you are coming out, you be you may be smelling smoke, 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 smoke. If you go into the chapel, there is a kind of a glow, hollow. Oh no that follow you. When people see your face, you, you, look, you look innocent. You look holy. Because you have, been, you, have, you have met the divine. I don't know whether many people have seen people that have gone for pilgrimage or just prayed in the chapel and coming out. It's a kind of innocence. It's a kind of uh, uh, that angelic color that they bear. It's only the spiritual eyes can see this when I'm telling you. By their fruit, we shall know them. You may not be seeing what others are seeing about you. When you see a child of God, you will know. Not people that have judgmental or spirit. Anything that you do is bad in their, in front, in their, in their own eyes. I'm not talking about that one. You see people that are very positive. Not polluted minds and hearts. The purity of mind and heart. You see your brother, you see your sister, you think positive about him or her. Not gossiping against your brother or your sister. Or judging your brother or your sister. Jesus said, do not judge. So what kind of people are you moving around with? The psalmist says, blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked. The Bible condemned the wicked. There are wicked men, there are wicked women. The 
there are wicked women, there are wicked men. Wicked children are still there too. There was a woman. A news came to her that uh, the son was killed. She never knew that that her own son, one of her sons, was among the cultic people in the campus. When when you see this young man, you never even know that uh, he he was among the cult. The stodge ones, till when he was shut down by their opponents, and many people were talking. Innocent mom did not even know that his very young boy was uh, among the courtists in school. That was not what the parents sent this young man to do in school. So many children don't listen to their parents. So many siblings don't listen to their siblings. You continue to go deeper and deeper, mingling with the devil till you cannot come out again. Some of them regret it. Some of them are adamant about that. But all you have to do is to listen to the voice of wisdom and inspiration in the scripture. The word of God is telling us tonight that there will be blessing for people that do not walk with the wicked or follow their footsteps. This is the one who does not walk in the step with the wicked. You, you have searched around and looked around and the only person you see is the wicked one. What will you learn from the wicked man or woman? It, it may not benefit you and your family. You may try to uh, 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 please the wicked man or woman at the detriment of your own family because you may try to keep the friendship going or you may be afraid, you won't tell your husband, you won't tell your wife, and you are, you, are, you, are, you are drowning with the wicked. And nobody understands what's going on with you. You start machiating. Speak up and gain your freedom. Nothing will happen to you, child of God. If you realize where you are, and you know that you are drowning, make a phone call to your pastors. Make a phone call to prayer it's intercessors. Make phone calls to a prayer warriors. Tell them you are drowning, that you want to be safe. Today is still a new beginning of your success in life, child of God. Do not walk with the steps of the, in the steps of the wicked or with the wicked. Or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mortals. Go and look at the book of Psalm 1. From verse 1 to 3. He's talking to us tonight. Verse 2 says, But whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and who meditates on his law day and night. You, then you can say with, uh, with uh, Isaiah 62 verse 5 that, that you are the delightful of the Lord. Book of Psalm 1, verse 2 says, But whose delight is in the law of the Lord? O blessed are those who fear the Lord and walk in His ways. Chicken when you are reverencing the Lord, not just fearing the Lord, but uh, uh, being, being, being in the presence of the Lord 
with humility and reverence. God understands that you love him. God understands that you are adoring him. I know my sheep, my sheep know me. Good shepherd is Jesus, I will follow him. Yes, yeah. I know my sheep, my sheep know me. He hears my voice. God recognizes us one by one. He has counted all the hairs on your head. The Lord of Jacob is with us. And God of Jacob is our stronghold. Verse 3 says, That person is like a tree planted by streams of water. Look at that. Which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. Look at that. When you are going with a good friend, you are happy. You do not fear. You are blessed. And your everything yields fruit. Your children are safe. Your wife is safe. Your husband is safe. Your household is safe. But if you are walking with the wicked, you tell your children or your family, uh, if this person comes, so let, don't come to the parlor. That this person behaves somehow uh, when, he's, uh, when I'm not around and he comes or she comes. Uh, be very careful with him or her. What is he or she doing there? Why are you keeping that kind of company? You are endangering your family. You're endangering your life. Be careful what I'm telling you. But when you are safe in the Lord, make God your best friend. Make God your best friend, child of God. Hold on to the Lord. Hold on me, O oh Lord. Don't let me go out. Hold on me, O oh Lord. Don't let me go astray. Jiggy day, Mone, Wemo. A perpona kanda fin. Jiggy day, Mone, Wemo. A perpona kanda fin. Mbo, Mbowana kachamo, ekwe na kankufiono, ekwe na kanda fwe chukwoma. Wa chuku, child of God. When you are in the presence of the Lord, the terribility of the Lord is enormous. You'll be feeling the chill and spark of the divine, and the grace of God will be sufficient for you. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Child of God, look at the benefits. Look at the fruit of one with the Lord. That you are like tree planted by streams of water which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Look at the benefits, spiritual benefits, physical benefits that you are with the Lord, that you are like so, like the tree planted uh, by the streams of water. The Lord is the oxygen of our life. The purity of our being. And our fusiba nature of the Jeba and our wabu. The oxygen of our life is the Lord. Whatever they do prospers. You know, we need to be telaka bongozi. 
when you have soaked yourself and you have immersed yourself deeply in the Lord, whatever you touch is blessing. People around you, they are happy. When you make a phone call to a child of God, you don't feel like leaving that person on the phone. The person will feel like, uh, like uh, staying on and on and on. When you call your child of God on the phone, your high blood pressure is normal. 